The dwarves of yore made mighty spells, while hammers fell like ringing bells. In places deep where dark things sleep, in hollow halls beneath the fells. In my latest episode of Building Tips and Tricks, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to build dwarven style homes and settlements both above and below ground. Of course, being a fictional species you could get away with building anything and calling it Dwarven, but for this I'm going to showcase the basic Dwarven image portrayed in some of the most popular fictional texts. And we're going to start off with the underground style of Dwarven build, and as you can see I have built a huge Dwarven cavern or hall, and I think it looks really good actually, I did, I did work quite hard on this. But yeah, we're going to look at all of the different features of this build and talk you through how to replicate this yourself. Now, of course, I don't really want you to just build this exact room. I'm just going to show you each section of the build very briefly so you can build your own unique style. And we're going to start off with the pillars. Now, these are pretty much the central part of the build. They support the whole thing and also add a lot of decoration. So basically, all I've done is I've gone up in a pole and then I have made a little support at the bottom, which is this section here. And then all the way up it, I have just created these different rings of decoration and all sorts going all the way up like so and as you can see that's what creates the nice column like pattern which goes up along it as you can see I've added small amounts of glowstone to add a really nice form of lighting and I've also mixed in spruce wood with the stone bricks and things like that I have then repeated each column multiple times along here with a significant amount of space in between just to create that sense of support but also to tie this whole build together and just create a nice, long, almost endless looking hallway. Next up we have another form of lighting and these are s similar to braziers or just torches and as you can see they create a lot of light in the build. I have made almost goblet like shapes. They start off with a very flat wide base then they create a really thin column which gradually widens out in a, in a very steep gradient right at the top to create a cup-like shape. I've then piled coal ore, coal blocks, oak logs and hay bales just to add a bit of lore so that they've mined up coal and farmed up trees and hay and used it all to uh, create these huge braziers in the kingdom. And then I've added campfires and fires just to add the smoke particles and flaming features. And behind it, you can see I've added these simple arches. As you can see behind the braziers, we have these arches and these just create another sense of construction and support, but it also does create a nice layer of depth and patterns it really well. Of course, if you like, you can add the details into these arches, but the way I interpret it, dwarves aren't massive on beauty and architecture and more about function and and how everything supports each other. Also, as you can see, the roof starts off really low down here, but then gradually arches up and then back down again. This just creates a sense of height and makes it feel really, really spacious. And finally, for background information, I have not got any shaders on for this. This is not a reflection in the glass. This is actually a replica of the upper floor, but down below. Okay, maybe it's not a replica. I have made a few changes, for example the, the lights in here are not down there to create a sense of gloominess and darkness, but for the most part it's an exact replica. Now if you're doing this in survival and you don't want to build it like that, of course by all means don't do that, but if you're building in creative and have access to things like world edit, then I definitely recommend you do this because it doesn't take too long compared to survival mode. It creates a really nice atmospheric image of just reflection and really adds to the build even if you're not directly interacting with anything below. Make sure as well if you do have mob spawning switched off you may want to carpet the roof and things below that just so mobs don't spawn beneath the glass and ruin the effect. 
You see, mobs can't spawn on top of glass, but they can spawn on top of that. And that would kind of ruin the effect if there are zombies down there, but there aren't any up there. Now, you can probably see this is a very, very empty hall. Now, you may want that, but you probably don't. So here are some things you can use to fill it up. And firstly, we have a huge dining table. Now, we know that dwarves are big on their food and their alcohol. So we have some plates and chairs and cups of some sort of beer or whiskey or something that the dwarves can eat and drink. Now these are very simple chair designs, you can use whatever you want to fit your style but, but here we have a nice stone chair for them to sit at and eat their food. As well as this we have some thrones, we have a nice wooden and gold one to match there. The spruce wood in here and also the glowstone and the fire is the gold. This one we have a nice red and stone regal looking throne and this one uses more sandstone and golden colours. And on the table we have some lanterns, some poppies, some some turtle eggs and some cakes sort of to represent drinks and foods that could end up on a dwarven table. Or maybe you'd want to use it for trading and storage. As you can see here I have piles and piles of gold, diamond, redstone and emerald and things like that just to create an image of wealth and, and create a nice, nice golden rich atmosphere. As well as this we have gold we have barrels with weighted pressure plates and item frames and gold nuggets on top which kind of makes it look like the barrel is actually holding gold inside it. You don't actually need the item frame if you don't want it. It often looks good without that as well. We also have some minecarts here and there, some chests, some minecart chests and we also have some spices. Now this could be salt from dwarven salt mines and this could be some sort of rich dwarven spice. As well as this we have caskets of wine or beer or something just just laid along the side because as we know dwarves like their alcohol. And my third and final design is basically Smaug. <laughs> this is a nice dragon resting upon the gold. We've shadowed it with the nether wart as well as lit it with the red terracotta. We have wither skeleton skulls to create eyes with gold blocks and I personally think it looks really awesome. Now dwarves live in the mountains, so chances are where they live it's going to be really snowy. So of course they're going to need some kind of house to keep them warm. Now this is a house above ground and it's sort of a Nordic style house. Now we, we're just going to go through some of the brief features first. As you can see it's got a nice andesite, polished andesite and cobblestone foundation with spruce wood bordering it just to add a tiny bit more support. As you can see there's cobblestone and andesite piled up around it and, it's, and the detail's very limited, it's got a bit of texture and it's also got some support beams in the corner. Now, abo now above this section it has a sp nice spruce wall because chances are they're going to be using spruce wood if they're in the mountains. So they're going to be using stripped spruce wood, spruce planks and stripped dark oak wood in the, in the walls. This just adds a little bit of texture but also gives us an idea of where they get their wood from and how they build their houses. Now the windows are actually made of yellow stained glass. Now if you don't want to use yellow stained glass that's absolutely fine but I feel it creates a nice warm homely atmosphere on the interior of the houses. Now the roof is a nice bell shape, it starts off at a fairly shallow gradient so it usually goes up by about one, two or three stair, stair blocks like so and then it suddenly starts to get a bit steeper so it starts off fairly shallow and then it gets steeper and that's a nice almost Nordic style of roof. What I like to do as well is add little notches on the end of these uh, as I feel it just makes a nice little trim, just adds a bit of detail and it also allows it to stick out a bit. As you can see it just make it just it just adds a tiny bit more decoration and I feel like it can usually make the build quite a bit better. We also have a chimney to emphasize the fact that they need to keep warm so, and we've got a campfire in the top to create the smoke particles. And we also have different sections of the house here which, which are di a different style to the other parts of the house. This is made out of stone instead of uh, stripped wood and I feel it adds quite a bit to the house. 
As you can see, we have a nice L shape for the house from above, and there's also a dormer sticking out. Now, if you're low on dark prismarine, or you don't think it looks that good, you can exchange it for different materials. For example, on this side, I used red nether brick, which does look quite good, especially if you want a nice dark, gloomy atmosphere. And on the other side, I've used a snow roof, which is actually one of my favourite styles of roof. As you can see, they all blend in together, they all look absolutely fine, and while these two are my personal favourites, you can use pretty much any block to be honest. But anyway, here we have it. We have done a huge dwarven settlement. We have a nice big underground hall fit for a dwarven king, and we also have a small humble little dwarven house for anybody who wants to live above ground, out of the shadows of the mines. We also have some details for the insides of the mines, with the with the banquet tables, storage systems, and dragons. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed, and I do hope you liked these dwarven styles of build. This whole video was suggested by my name's King in my Discord server. I definitely recommend you check him out. He does lots of Minecraft content, and I also recommend you check out my Discord server, where you can suggest all sorts of videos and suggestions and tips and tricks for other videos so i do hope you enjoyed this video if you did please as usual leave a suggestion down below i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all next time goodbye